Our next speakers are Peter Chapman and Dr. Young Sang Kim from Ion Q. Peter is president and CEO and has served in this capacity for the past four and a half years. And Dr. Kim is co-founder and CTO. In his pr prior experience as director of engineering at uh, Amazon Prime, Peter led the program to implement Prime's two-day delivery service. He also invented the original sound card for computers and wrote the FAA's program to prevent mid-air collisions. Dr. Kim is one of the top quantum computer engineers of our time. He developed the first semiconductor based on a single photon source. And together with Dr. Chris Munro, he also developed the first scalable quantum architecture using trapped ions. Dr. Kim serves as the chief technology officer and a board member of IonQ. Please welcome Peter Chapman and Dr. Young Sang Kim. So um, first, uh, just a, a thank you for everyone for coming today. We have, we're live streaming this event. Um, we've had about 1,000 people sign up also for the live stream event. So between you and outside is quite an interest in today's talk. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, today, we're going to talk about getting ready for the uh, enterprise grade era of quantum computing. Um, when I started some four and a half years ago, uh, people said that quantum computing was still a long way off, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. <clears throat> um, and it was largely uninvestable. I mean, most people don't realize is that <clears throat> if you're a venture fund, you have a window to return that money back to investors. And it's very unusual for that to be a 20-year window. Only two or three funds in the world have that kind of time frame. So when you go to a venture capitalist and say, uh, I'd like to, to get your money, but I'm not going to see a return for 15 years, that's a really hard investment. It's even a hard investment sometimes for governments. I mean, elected officials don't stand usually for 20 years. So, um, so when I started, actually, the word was, is quantum was uninvestable. Um, but we changed that narrative. Uh, we started by putting IONQ computers out on uh, the various cloud providers. And people could actually start to use them. For just a couple of bucks, you could give it a try. Uh, several years ago, people used to say to me all the time, quantum computers really exist? No, I didn't think they really existed. And I said, no, you can go out in AWS or Azure, uh, and for three bucks, you can give it a try. And so we've started to change the narrative that quantum is actually real. Um, but today, we're going to look to change the narrative once again. So one of the not so fun aspects of being a public company is having more lawyers. So I'm not going to uh, take up our valuable time by reading this slide aloud. However, um, we do advise you to please review our website with a similar cautionary notes, especially in advance of making an investment in INQ. Okay, <clears throat> so you know our goal here is um, to get to a place where quantum computers are powerful enough uh, to show commercial value to our customer. And when we looked at this slide, we, we should have added to the end with as little error correction as possible. The more error correction that's needed, the more uh, likelihood that quantum's promise is off into the future. So this statement is true on the screen. We've had a version of this now for several years, slightly modified over time. But I think we really should have added uh, with as little error correction as possible. And one of the things you might have heard uh, just recently is that we think we can get to AQ64 with error mitigation instead of error correction. And that's a big deal, and we'll talk about that today. So our technology is, is proven uh, trapped ion technology. Uh, it has a few uh, key differentiators, including all-to-all -all connectivity, naturally replicable qubits, long coherence times, high fidelity, 
and a modular and scalable architecture. Uh, we chose a qubit modality where the qubits themselves are naturally replicable and naturally quantum. And it gave us a huge advantage in that we started off with a very low error rate. And I think it's, un, it's not controversial that everyone thinks that uh, ion trap technology in the early days has the best error rates. And we've shown that, um, and also others who are doing ion trap technology. Um, over the past couple of years, and most notably this past year, we've seen great, uh, great technical momentum for our ion trap technology. We've consistently uh, tra tracked well against our public roadmap. This was the, uh, basically the same slide that we did prior to the IPO. And we've exceeded um, our most recent AQ29 goal by seven months. Um, assuming that we continue to meet our technical objectives, AQ64 systems are just around the corner. And we believe this is when enterprise-grade quantum computing and commercial advantage will be unlocked by our customers. And we'll I'll talk to you about why that is the case. So our technology um, is not just driving momentum for I and Q, but also for our customers and partners. And just a huge thanks to, uh, to our customers, partners, and investors who have been with us to help us get us to this day. We are on the cusp of enterprise grade quantum computing, where quantum computing um, all really start to deliver game changing value for customers. You know, we've been in this NISC era where people are doing uh, proof of concepts, and we're about to enter into a new realm where uh, suddenly we can start to think about building applications which are powerful enough that they should be able to deliver value to a customer and put into a production environment. But you need a production quantum computer. Um, so the NISC error, we thought to be able to get to kind of commercial quantum advantage is that you would need to do lots of error correction. And uh, in fact, actually there's a a uh, fairly famous slide from BCG several years ago that talked about the three phases of quantum. So what's interesting today, and one of our first big announcements, is that we think even in the NISC era that we can get to AQ64 for customers. And we'll talk again about what, how, why that's so important. Um, so, I want to just talk a little about, you've heard our AQ numbers. Um, the AQ numbers are based on benchmarks that um, the QEDC put together. It's a series of, app, of application benchmarks. And so um, I want to just talk about kind of how this scales. Of course, it scales exponentially. Um, you've all heard that every time you add a good enough qubit, not just a physical qubit, one that has enough um, low error, that you double the computational power of the quantum computer. Quantum computing grows exponentially uh, to numbers very quickly. We're going to be outside of your vocabulary. Actually, my guess is today we will talk about numbers that you've never heard uh, about before. And going forward, that will be the case all the time. And in fact, actually, we'll get to a place where we need to come up with new names for some of the computational power of quantum computing. Uh, I'll suggest one today. Um, so what this slide is trying to do is, is represent the growth of the computational space of a quantum computer. So if you were to consider AQ5, that it would be roughly, our analogy is the tip of a, of a magic marker. And generally the circuit, uh, the circuits that you can run is about 25 entangling gates. So because after that, what happens is the error rate starts to come in and stop you from running larger circuits. So if you had AQ5, our analogy is about 10 millimeters. If you had AQ29, suddenly you would have the surface area of a basketball. 
And this is the system that we just um, released recently. And again, if you square the number, that's roughly the number of entangling gates that um, up to that you should be able to do with that system. So this is about 500 million squared millimeters in comparison to EQ5. And, and it also means you can look at those kinds of, of different states in this application. So at the same time, AQ64 is about, well, it's, it's a little bit bigger than the United States. It's about 10 quintillion squared millimeters. Or in other words, is AQ64 is about 30 billion times larger than AQ29. The computational space of AQ64 is 2 to the 64. And that's roughly 18 quintillion. And to put that in perspective, Frontier's supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Laboratories uh, calculates about 1.2 quintillion floating point operations per second. So um, now we're going to come to my first new word, is everyone in quantum is going to want to say, because I do it, is want to say quintillion is quantillion. But it's actually Q-U-I. But we can save quantillion for some much larger AQ number in the future, because we're about to run out of, of names for all these new very large um, systems. So don't say quantillion. It'll be exactly what you want to do, because you're from quantum. It's quintillion. So we believe that a AQ64 will be a game changer and bring quantum into the enterprise era, where quantum computers will bring real value to businesses. AQ64 unlocks a circuit depth of up to 4,000 entangling gates. So if you are now today playing with an AQ5 system, you're building circuits that have 25 entangling gates. So suddenly now you can start to build um, large applications using this machine. So we think that this is going to be a massive game changer. And so now, and, and you, can, you can look at these applications suddenly with, in parallel, in a fraction of a second, 18 quintillion different states in a single, a single instruction. And just we're now finally to the place, this is the place, to be honest, that when I joined, I dreamt of that we would get to this place today where we could suddenly produce applications that could take on the world's largest supercomputers um, for certain applications, of course, not everything. So um, today, companies and um, uh, customers are doing proof of concepts. These tend to be small engagements where companies are just starting to learn about quantum. But now, today, given that this system is coming, it's time to move from proof of concepts to now is to start to work on real applications. So our, my first call to action is for all of you to sit down and start thinking about what you're going to do with 4,000 entangling gates. What kinds of applications are you going to create? Because today is the, the day that you should get started. Um, as an inter industry, uh, we're looking for the next Bill Gates, who's going to create base, the, the basic, a basic for quantum. Uh, we're also looking for Dan Bricklin to create the uh, quantum spreadsheet. So the opportunities here for companies, governments, uh, is tremendous. We're just at the beginning. We're still waiting for that first killer application. The killer application has been waiting for the hardware to be fast enough and more and powerful enough, and it's now just about to be here. So my call to action to all of you is please be the next Bill Gates or Dan Bricklin and bring it to quantum.
So um, new technologies uh, come in waves. And those that see the waves in advance tend to be the ones who monetize it. And this has been shown in over and over in various um, technology waves. And we think that it will happen in quantum as well. So like many technologies before, early adopters capture much of the, the value. So the question for you in the room is, are you going to be Blockbuster or are you going to be Netflix? One of those companies saw the internet come and the other one did something about it. So my challenge to you is quantum is coming. I'm telling you today the machine will be here shortly and you need to be creating applications for it that actually be delivering real value for customers. We need to stop doing the proof of concepts and need to move on to applications. I haven't seen yet a, a circuit that requires 4,000 entangling gates from, in an application. So we need to start seeing those kinds of applications. So we've delivered on our roadmap uh, so far. We believe um, that we are now within two years of AQ64 and commercial advantage. Uh, as I've said, now is the time to start building applications. When I worked with Ray Kurzweil, you know, he's a famed futurist and he's written books on the topic that predicts the future. What you might not have known is we use that as internal research to figure out when we should invest. And the time to invest is not when the technology arrives, but of course the time before. And so today is that time. Um, and we're strongly urging that this new phase of commercial advantage. Because if we don't start to show that these machines are produce real value, then venture capitalists and governments will not invest in them. So we're excited to be on this cusp and really in a new era for quantum. Um, we do not talk about quantum supremacy or um, uh, quantum advantage. The only thing that my customers care about is can I build a better mousetrap and at a better price? And if I can, I'll make the sale and INQ will be successful. Uh, a good friend of our family was Arthur C. Clarke. And he's quoted with saying, if an elderly but distinguished scientist says that something is possible, he is most certainly right. But if he says that it's impossible, he is most probably wrong. What Arthur knew that it was a fool's errand to try to prove what can't be done. And that's what I think quantum supremacy is. I don't know how it would prove that on a classical system you couldn't do something. But I don't think it matters. I think the only thing that matters is that I can show with a quantum application that I can deliver value that the customer uh, doesn't have today. So we're not going to talk about quantum supremacy ever, hopefully. We think of it as purely as an academic term. So our roadmap is built on three pillars that make up the foundation of your quantum success. And each pillar is enabled by our hardware and services. First, you must empower quantum talent and drive workforce development. And you need universal cloud access. You need to be, make it easy for people to learn and use these systems. Second is you have to get production ready. That's what today's talk is all about. Building and testing production ready applications ahead of these systems is very important. And we're putting you on notice today is you now have less than two years to be ready. And then th third is you have to make sure that you have access to the most powerful systems because you need to be able to run those applications in a production environment. And we're, today as an industry, we're not there. You know, and when I was at Amazon, if we were going to stand up a new service, we would calculate how long it took to run the service in wall clock time and then we would look at the maximum load of users and we would calculate the number of machines to meet a particular SLA. We need to do that now starting in quantum. 
we need to get to a guaranteed SLA for the machines so that you can run production applications and make sure they run when you need them to run. Like if you're a logistics company and first thing in the morning at 5 a.m., you're busily doing 120,000 route optimizations, you need to make sure that the machines and the capacity will be there waiting for you and there's no excuses why you can't be ready when your drivers show up at 6.30. So these are the three things that you need to do and to be able to get ready for um, this enterprise era of quantum. So um, we've got a robust portfolio of high performance current generation systems that are built for incubation, innovators, and, and uh, application development. So you've seen these systems before. You can see the AQ numbers, and you can see also how the computational states grow. So we started with uh, our 11 qubit system, not to be confused about the number of physical qubits versus the ones which the error rate allows you to use fully. So 11 qubit system, only nine of them, the error rate only allows you to use nine. There's 11, but the, nine, but the errors are saying you can't use more than nine. And then the 25 qubit system, 32 qubits, but only 25 because the error rate isn't good enough to be able to use all 32. And so, um, and you can see here how the state grows. So uh, ARIA and Forte are our current generation systems um, for driving quantum education, uh, exploration, and incubation. These are easily accessible uh, via the cloud. So you, you know, if you, everyone in this room probably has one of the three cloud uh, subscriptions in your organization. So you have easy access to these systems. They're not expensive to sit down and start to uh, learn on. For a couple of bucks, you can run your first uh, quantum application. Um, so with ARIA and Forte, you can start to create a flywheel of, quinta, of quantum innovation and incubation to drive your quantum proficiency and talent across your organization. So th this is one of three major announcements today. Today we're introducing uh, Forte Enterprise. It's a rack-mounted system. It fits within your standard data center. You don't need to build a new building. It, uh, it fits all the electrical and AC specifications that are found in standard data centers. This is an AQ35 system. So if you square that, says roughly you can do about 1,000 entangling gates with this system. Uh, this system is the stepping stone to the next system, which uh, we'll talk about shortly. Um, this system can uh, explore 35 billion computational states, and as I said, circuit widths roughly of about 1,000 entangling gates. And so this will be delivered in, in uh, this next 12 months uh, to our first customers. In fact, actually, in, uh, with Switzerland, 
They bought one of these systems and will be the first people to get this system put into their data center. And so we're very excited about this. Um, the fact that it's a rack mounted system. You know, INQ systems, you can walk into the room, you can have somebody walk by, it doesn't affect the system. We joke um, that all of our locations have freight lines next to us and the, the ground rumbles. And that doesn't affect the systems. We're not actually sure that it'll work without a freight line. You might need a freight line to be able to get this to work. Um, so we'll, we'll find that out. And, and Switzerland has uh, six freight lines that go within 20 feet of where we're going to put this quantum computer. So these things um, are ruggedized, work uh, in a standard data center. Um, and this is, it doesn't, to me it still looks big, but this is 40% smaller than the previous generation systems. And so in every generation we're working on to get it smaller. And, and why is that? Well, because smaller is also uh, a predictor of cost. And we all know that at some point, we're going to get to a point where you can't put more qubits onto a chip, and you'll have to go to a network and have multiple systems. But I need Moore's Law to kick in. I need the cost of those systems to come down. Because if in the future you had 1,000 algorithmic qubits and you needed eight systems that are all networked together, as much as I'd love to charge eight times the current price, I think we need to, to be cheaper because we don't want quantum computers to be a, a half a billion dollars. We want them to be affordable. So we're working just as much on producing um, manufacturable small systems as we are in, in uh, improving the uh, gate fidelities. So we're very excited about this system, but it's the stepping stone um, to the next one. So uh, Forte Enterprise is for public and private enterprises that want to have the most powerful quantum computer on premises. Uh, it's secure, easily deployable, highly available and maintainable. It's intended to plug right into your existing data center and be compatible with all your existing IT and building infrastructure. It's amazing how many little details are required outside of, of quantum to be able to make it fit within a standard data center. Strange little things like LDAP, all sorts of things that you would have never think you'd have to, to think about. So this is the beginning of a mission critical strategic asset that, that uh, you start to house your valuable compute infrastructure. And of course, uh, one of Quantum computer's best friends is having a powerful classical computer nearby, so you can do hybrid compute. Um, and this is available today. Like I mentioned, we've sold our first one of these systems and, uh, and can be delivered to you uh, in 2024. These systems will be coming out of our Seattle factory. And so um, this will be the first system that's not being built bespoke, but is now being built in a uh, Henry Ford style production line where we're building multiple systems at the same time. Uh, we're working on things like making sure that all the components are easily accessible and that if a power supply goes down, you can easily slide it in and slide it out so that your downtime is, is as small as humanly possible. So this is a, uh, a, a game changer for INQ. But now I'd like to introduce INQ Tempo, our next generation system with AQ64. An unimaginable 18 quintillion different computational space that you can use with this system. This one, substantially smaller again, fitting in roughly three racks so a huge size reduction from the previous generation. Where this one is intended to be in a production environment, you probably buy several of these to be able to hit your SLA for your particular application if you're putting it into production. Uh, this, is, this is a monster of a machine. This is the machine when I joined INQ. This is the machine that I joined for. 
to be able to uh, show real value to customers with a quantum computer that's actually powerful enough to deliver that. And that's this machine. And also in Switzerland, they bought two generations of systems. So they bought a Forte Enterprise. And today you can see the second system, which is an AQ64 system. And this one roughly is about 34 billion times more powerful than the previous generation of Forte Enterprise. And I'll say a little cheekily that if you don't have one of these, then um, you know, you're probably falling behind. So we encourage people to be able to get access to this. Uh, this is, is for IEQ, uh, the, the next system that will come out of Seattle and we'll build in our factory as well. Um, we will look to start producing many of these to be able to hit uh, customer demand. And as I mentioned, about half the company now is working on manufacturability of quantum computing and reducing the cost. And so um, we're, it's, a, it's a busy time. In this quarter, we will actually cut the ribbon to be able to open the factory in Seattle. And we've already hired um, I think roughly 50 people to start there, and we will grow that workforce in Seattle uh, quickly. I'll mention too that one of the things that we're actively working on is quantum networking. So you saw in the uh, Forte Enterprise where it showed the little beams of light, it won't actually look like that. It's actually going to be a fiber optic cable instead. And so we're working on that as well. And you'll hear those uh, announcements over the next 18 months or so. Um, this is um, the first machine that with our customers, we are working today to create applications that can take advantage of these kinds of circuit widths. So what we've seen so far is that with a smaller quantum computer, we can often beat, especially in things like machine learning, the best classical algorithms. But what's interesting is the, the, uh, the applications seem to scale very well with the number of qubits. Like for instance, when we were doing object detection, we noticed that just adding qubits to the problem actually increased the success rate of the object detection. And so we think with this, and if you think about this, um, there's a video, too, that we'll, sh we'll show you. It's up on our website that talks actually to how does the quantum computer do object detection. We encourage you to watch that. But in, in these early machines, you could only load low-resolution images into the quantum computer. Um, but with these machines, suddenly you can load you know, very high-res images, if not entire uh, video sequences, into the quantum computer to do object de detection all in parallel. So these little applications that we started with, where we started working on finding the, um, the general algorithm, seem to be scaling very well with the power of the quantum computer. And Jung Seng will talk more coming up about that. <clears throat> so we have machines that are designed to support you at every stage of your quantum journey. If you have not tried our systems yet, please stop by our booth to get uh, more information. And with that, uh, and so you've heard two announcements. There's a third one still to come, major announcements. So you've heard um, the uh, Forte Enterprise and Tempo. And at the end of the presentation, we'll give you the third major announcement of the day. But till then, um, and please welcome Dr. Jung Seng Kim who will walk us through the work we're doing with our partners. All right, thank you, Peter. Um, I am uh, very happy to be here. My name is uh, Jung San Kim. Um, I'm uh, one of the co-founders uh, of INQ, and we definitely uh, have been uh, looking for the technology progress uh, to get to a point where we can actually deliver a meaningful value. Uh, so as um, Peter mentioned, we have been building better machines. 
Um, but better machines can be a nice big box if you don't know how to use it. Uh, I think it's really important for us to uh, figure out how, what to use it for to create uh, the, the commercial uh, value to, to the users. So this is our technology roadmap that was shown earlier, but this time with a little bit of focus on what we think the use cases uh, may be. Um, and we have uh, um, outlined that quantum machine learning will be one of the first use cases. Um, and uh, we believe that the enterprise-grade quantum computing, uh, which is where enterprises can actually start to see some real value, um, can, can really happen in the next two years um, as we build powerful enough quantum computers that can actually do things that classical computers uh, will have a challenge of doing. Um, but in order to actually make that happen, uh, we actually have to start thinking about developing and creating a, a product scale uh, applications uh, today. So uh, with enterprise applications, when they are ready, uh, we can actually start to uh, provide commercial value. And INQ plans to deliver um, the hardware, the quantum computer hardware that's capable of providing those capabilities uh, with AQ64 uh, and beyond. And, and it's, as Peter indicated, um, we expect that to be in 2025 and beyond. So some of the early um, indicators of uh, what quantum applications can do, uh, we are finding out that quantum machine learning models can be a lot more efficient in capturing uh, structure in the data, especially when there's a lot of correlation in the data. Um, those are places where we believe uh, quantum computers uh, can be um, advantageous. So we um, currently, um, as, as uh, Peter's call for action, uh, we need to focus on um, developing applications that actually have a commercial value. And those uh, applications and opportunities come from everywhere. They don't necessarily come from quantum computing companies, but they come from enterprises uh, that are actually um, operating uh, their, their own business. I am sure all of you are thinking about very challenging opportunities or uh, where a new technology solution can actually enable uh, new opportunities. In order to actually get uh, build up uh, for that future, the future of an early adopter and front runners who can capture the value of quantum computing time uh, opportunity, uh, we need to start with making sure that you have um, talent that is empowered uh, to, to, to find these early solutions. Uh, so at IonQ, uh, we have quantum experts who is more than ready um, to work with uh, uh, those domain experts in your companies and your enterprises or your research organizations. Um, who can uh, develop new ideas for various real-world problems that we can tackle uh, with the power of quantum. Um, and actually, we can, we'll, we can actually create some um, proof of principles uh, to actually train your workforce um, and, and eventually create a roadmap for those applications uh, to impact your business. We are actually in that, once you have the talent, we are actually more than ready uh, to actually work with you uh, to create production-ready uh, applications today. Um, with the anticipation that in a few years, we will have quantum computers uh, that will be able to do things that classical computers will have a hard time uh, competing with. Um, so it is very important for those front runners uh, to start the effort to get ready for quantum enabled products today. Um, and we can help, we can collect a partner and we can push that frontiers forward. Um, in this phase of uh, pre preparation for, the, for production, uh, we identify innovative quantum solutions uh, to commercially viable problems and challenges that you have, use cases uh, that, that you have. And we can pilot applications and develop um, a maturing uh, platform so that we'll be ready to deploy it at scale when the high performance quantum computers are available. And of course, um, as the product scale quantum applications develop in the next few years, um, we are ramping up our production capabilities so that we can actually uh, deploy this at scale when you're ready. So I'm gonna give you a couple of um, examples of things that we have been working on in the last few years. Um, actually, uh, one of the examples uh, is advanced quantum machine learning. Um, you know, machine learning and AI is applied everywhere today. Right? There isn't a field or an area or industry that you can think of where people are not thinking about deploying AI or machine learning. Things were not like that 10 years ago, but those who actually have uh, led the charge um, certainly uh, experience a, a, a huge advantage today. Now, the potential for quantum is just as large, meaning uh, there will uh, come a time where I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm confident there will come a time where quantum technologies will be applied to a very large number of industries and uh, use cases that we are not thinking about today. Now, here um, we show an example of uh, work we have done with our partner, Hyundai uh, Motor Company. 
um, for the last few years. Um, and here we, we developed a novel uh, image recognition techniques. And of course, the use case we're thinking about um, is shown uh, in this uh, little video. Um, as you uh, drive, there will be road signs and things like that uh, that we recognize. But there, if you are thinking about a more advanced um, self-driving cars, there has to be machines who will have to recognize that. And, and those are um, challenging um, example problems. And we actually have uh, developed a novel quantum uh, algorithms for uh, identifying this. Now, the technical uh, details of this, as, as Peter indicated, we, we made an instructive video. Um, so, so you can actually look at it uh, in the, uh, in the, on our website. Uh, but these uh, highlight that quantum can be very powerful because uh, we can actually have very expressive models uh, leading uh, to much more efficient uh, quantum machine learning. Now, a second example um, is um, a logistics problem. Uh, here, uh, we partner with our customer Airbus um, to think about cargo loading, where you have a bunch of packages that have to go into a bunch of bins in an airplane, um, but you also have to make sure that you don't overload the aircraft or imbalance it so that the aircraft tips. Uh, so these are types of uh, lots of possibilities, but also we have a lot of constraints. Those constrained optimization problems turn out to be a very challenging problem uh, in, in, in logistics. Uh, we have developed a quantum machine learning, uh, quantum optimization algorithm uh, to actually tackle this problem that combines both machine learning and optimization subroutines. Um, and uh, these types of solutions, uh, we're actually using it as a, as a template to continue to develop a production scale uh, platform over which these things can be um, with INQ, we are studying one of our applications, aircraft loading. It's a constrained combinatorial optimization problem. It's well suited for variational optimization on a quantum computer. It's definitely a challenging use case, but when we reach quantum advantage, it would have an important impact. It would be an important uh, business application to, um, to drive business efficiencies and to reduce the environmental impact of our products. And iron-based technologies like INQs offers promising opportunities because it's well suited for variational optimization problems. And INQ provided us accessibility so that we were able to test our use case on real hardware and see real results. Yeah, that, was our, that was from our partner at Airbus, uh, uh, highlighting the, the efficiency of our collaboration. Now, I've given, I've given you very two, two very short uh, examples of the use cases, but there is a numerous more. Uh, but I think one of the real uh, opportunities is how do we actually take um, these uh, uh, you know, progress that we have made and start to drive uh, an economic driver? The combination of the talent training I mentioned about, the quantum solution development effort that we should all uh, embark upon, and access to high-performance quantum computers available from INQ they provide a fruitful opportunity for developing a commercially viable applications. Um, and there are uh, more coordinated efforts to try to harness that um, to actually create an economic uh, driving engine. And Quantum Basel uh, is a great example of such a quantum innovation hub. And here INQ is partnering uh, with Quantum Basel to create a vital ecosystem for quantum technology innovation uh, to drive economic growth by focusing uh, on enabling local enterprises uh, to develop innovative solutions for real-world problems. Here is the CEO of Quantum Basel, Demir Bogdan, describing our collaboration. We are very looking forward to welcome IONQ as our addition to our global partnership system for quantum computing here at Uptown Basel. IONQ's technology, IONQ's R&D, will attract more business partners to invest into quantum computing will attract more startups to join our ecosystem and furthermore will attract future workforce to collaborate with ours. IonQ's technology alongside our other partners is especially good be it for use cases in the field of logistic, industrial production or life science, chemistry, material science. This is something which differentiates quantum computing from traditional computing. All right, so besides uh, all of the other, um, a couple of examples I've given you, uh, there are many, many other examples of real world use cases that INQ is actually collaborating with our partners. Um, and there are numerous more opportunities uh, that we have yet to embark upon. So 
Um, the call for action is uh, if you are an uh, enterprise who wants to become a front runner, or if you want to, um, if you're a local or federal government who's interested in stimulating uh, quantum economy uh, by enabled uh, and empowered by advances in quantum computers, this is a time to really think about the economic impact of different applications you can develop. Now, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to get into the technical details of our roadmap. Um, we are planning on a, uh, a webinar next month where we dive into the details of that. So if you're interested in our, kind of our technolo technology roadmap, uh, please join us uh, in the next, uh, on October 26th. So with that, um, I'd like to see if I can call uh, Peter back onto the stage uh, to, to wrap up our conversation. Thanks, Cheng Seng. So as we've looked at here today, um, we have the systems to be able to start to build what at Amazon we would call a flywheel for you to be able to have that flywheel and it starts to spin and generate new value uh, for you and your customers. Um, we've, uh, we've laid out a path from today to where we think that um, uh, you will be able to use one of our machines and be able to deliver value, real customer value. Um, so, you know, become the quantum front runner uh, going forward, uh, using your local workforce, uh, your startups, um, your investments, and INQ hardware. And let's bring quantum to kind of the promised land that we've all dreamed about um, and get and our Call to action, of course, is to get started. Um, the last um, thing that I'd like to talk about is our last announcement. And the last major announcement, I'm delighted to announce that INQ has signed an agreement with the Air Force Research Lab, Air Pharrell, to continue our engagement and offer INQ quantum computing and quantum networking to advance Air Pharrell's groundbreaking work. This is a $25.5 million agreement that ref reflects the strength of our commitment to Air Pharrell's critical missions. I want to thank Dr. Michael Haydock and the entire team at Air Pharrell for the confidence in INQ to deliver on our commitments. We're excited about our joint advancements in quantum computing and what our future systems will enable for Air Pharrell in the world. This announcement is significant in a different way in that it shows that quantum is actually a business. Because very quickly, you're seeing INQ's uh, bookings growth and revenue growth continue in a way that I don't think the quantum industry has seen before. And so INQ was a front runner, obviously, being the first ones to go public and also to raise some roughly $800 million in the process. But now we're turning it into a real business. So um, this year, the, we've blown out our numbers in terms of what we told the street, and we continue to do so, and the year's not over yet. So uh, in addition to not only having great hardware, but we actually have a great business as well. And so that's also exciting, not just for INQ, but we're showing investors that it really is the case that quantum can be invested in and companies can make it a business. And so we hope that while we're doing well, that the rest of the industry follows suit and investors can have confidence, not just in us, but obviously in all the other quantum startups that are out there. And that we're kind of, if you will, we're uh, you know, raising the tide for all boats, if you will. So we're very excited. Um, and just to uh, final three, two new systems today and $25.5 million in new revenue, this, uh, new bookings this quarter. So it's been an exciting time. We look forward to this journey with you over the next months and year, and we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs>